Can marijuana help prevent Alzheimer's disease? New research says a key ingredient in the drug, THC, just might by safeguarding key amounts of a neurotransmitter that allows the brain to function. Pro-medical marijuana lobbies say it's a promising step, while critics argue the study is not enough and say smoking dopes just plain dangerous. Bruce Merkin of the Marijuana Policy Project supports medical marijuana and removing criminal penalties for its use. While David Krall is deputy director of the Drug Free America Foundation, a criminologist, he teaches a drugs, a deviance, and crime course at the University of Tampa. Gentlemen, good to see you. David, I'll start with you. You're against the legalization. Let me ask you, I mean, why, if this proves to be helpful medically? Well, I mean, what you have to look at, Scott, is the idea that we are not uncompassionate folks. The problem is that we have been looking at marijuana and its medical efficacy for a number of years. And what the FDA has concluded conclusively is that there is no medical benefit to smoking marijuana whatsoever. This is one study that was published today in terms of the Alzheimer's issue. But I mean, when you stop and realistically take a look at this issue in its broader perspective, no scientific evidence that's credible has been published that says that medical marijuana is a good thing. So you're telling me if the FDA does come out and says that it is a good thing, that your, your organization will change its, its stance? Well, what I'm saying is this. It's going to take a lot for the FDA to make that kind of, of a decision because What's happened is they have to go through a number of clinical trials in order to even demonstrate the efficacy of, of THC. Now, the reality of it is this. Smoked marijuana is probably or definitely a bad thing. However, if you take a look at the active chemical ingredient in cannabis, which is Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, that has been shown, at least in some limited studies in, the, in Great Britain and in Canada, that marijuana delivered by a non or THC delivered by a non smoked route of administration may and I emphasize right. may have some effect right I mean David let me turn to you look whatever happened to the argument mar marijuana you know kills brain cells now we're hearing that it's good for you well actually that's not true I mean marijuana is different from THC the problem that you have with marijuana when it's smoked is that when you burn the marijuana and you inhale it, there's no way to determine what that level of dosage is going to be once the individual ingests it. So there's no way to control titration. At the same time, when you stop and take a look at the metabolites that are produced by the burning of the marijuana itself, this activates the receptors in the central nervous system, right. and the effects of that, we don't necessarily know what those are. Bruce, is, is one study on animals really enough here? Well, the, the point to be made here is that this one study is, in fact, part of a very long uh, chain of studies uh, going back a couple of decades showing uh, that marijuana and its active components, and there are 66 chemicals called cannabinoids, uh, not only don't damage or injure brain cells, but they, in fact, protect nerve cells from many, many different kinds of damage, not just in Alzheimer's, but in other sorts of illnesses, too. And, in fact, that, that's not just my opinion. The U.S. government has a patent on cannabinoids, marijuana's active ingredients, as neuroprotectants, that is, substances that protect nerve cells. And I actually have it right here. This is in 1999, the U.S. government filed a patent uh, stating that cannabinoids, the many active ingredients in marijuana, including THC, protect nerve cells from damage in stroke, trauma, uh, and a number of different diseases, including Alzheimer's and a number of others, like Parkinson's. Bruce, what's the likelihood that we're going to see the FDA ever uh, say that uh, medical marijuana usage is good? Well, the problem is that the federal government has systematically blocked the kind of clinical trials that would be need needed to take the whole uh, marijuana plant to the FDA. Right. Uh, much of what Mr. Kroll said is flat wrong. There's, in fact, a great deal of research showing that it can be dosed adequately. It's actually more easy to dose by inhalation. And I do have to say also, you don't need to smoke marijuana to use it as medicine. There are simple devices called vaporizers, All right. which allow the benefits of inhalation without the junk in smoke. All right. All right, we'll follow this another night, guys. But thanks for joining us.